If you're a regular follower of the channel, you probably know I use Fedora on all my work devices. But there's been a flood of comments telling me to use Nobara instead. Nobara is Fedora, but with the goal to have the most used gaming and content creation apps and tools either pre-installed or made more accessible than on Fedora. So I installed Fedora and Nobara on the same gaming laptop, my Tuxedo Stellaris 15, and I compared the two including a few gaming benchmarks. So let's look at how Nobara fared compared to Fedora and let's look at our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safings Portmaster. Portmaster is an all-in-one tool to easily take your privacy to the next level. And it's a tool I use myself on all of my Linux devices. Portmaster lets you automatically block all trackers and malware in every application you run on your computer. Not just your web browser, but everything you run. It's easy to use with defaults already in place that lets you just set it and forget it. But if you like to configure every rule and every app, you also can. Portmaster is completely free and open source and also free of charge, as it's funded by users that subscribe to the SPN, a super-powered VPN that gives you multiple identities for every connection of every application. So if you want to easily improve the privacy of your system, whatever the Linux distro you use, or even on Windows, click the link in the description below and download the Portmaster for free. So first, what does Nobara bring on top of the Fedora base? Nobara is created by Glorious Eggroll, the creator of Proton GE, which is a more up-to-date version of Proton to run your games through Steam. Nobara takes Fedora and adds the Wine dependencies, Steam, all necessary codecs for video playback, third-party drivers, like their own packages for the NVIDIA drivers, which need a separate repo on Fedora, and a lot of fixes to various packages. And I mean a lot of fixes. The kernel, for example, uses some of the Zen kernel patches. It supports OpenRGB. It enables the AMD GPU driver for all the cards. It adds the Steam Deck patches, the Microsoft Surface patches. It improves compatibility with Asus laptops and Lenovo Legion laptops and more. On top of that, you'll get patches to better support fractional scaling, variable refresh rate. You'll get auto detection of your GPU to install the right driver. You'll get all the DaVinci Resolve dependencies pre-installed. Wine is included out of the box with all 32 and 64-bit dependencies and more. So not only does it pre-install a few apps that you will probably want if you're a gamer like Steam, Lutris or Mango HUD, but it also gives you a ton of patches and fixes for a potentially smoother and faster experience. Now it has a few drawbacks. Nobara only comes with GNOME or KDE officially. They don't plan to support other desktop environments. It also disables Secure Boot because their kernel is super custom. And major updates come later than on Fedora, about a month later usually. NVIDIA GPUs are only supported if your card can use the 515 driver or later, so all the cards are not going to work. And important to note, SE Linux is disabled and replaced with App Armor. And of course, well, the ISO is heavier because it ships a lot more stuff out of the box than Fedora. Fedora's ISO is 2 gigs, Nobara's is 3.2. And if you think that's bloated, then you probably never were the intended target of Nobara and you probably want to install everything manually. So yeah, Nobara, what it provides is basically the opposite of what you do. So let's compare the post-install process for Nobara and Fedora. The installer is Calamares, there's nothing special here, and it's better than the Fedora installer. Nobara gives you a welcome app that's actually useful and will offer to download codecs needed for video decoding and encoding. You can also install drivers there, like the NVIDIA or AMD GPU Pro drivers. Now, on Fedora, to add the NVIDIA drivers, I just had to click the Enable Third-Party Repos button and then install the NVIDIA driver manually from the software center and then reboot. Nobara has a one-click button in the Welcome app instead, and it installs their own package for the NVIDIA CUDA proprietary driver. It's a few less steps. Same goes for apps. On Fedora, I usually install Discord, OBS, and Steam right away from Flathub, which is enabled by default in Fedora 38 if you click this third-party repo button. On Nobara, only Steam is pre-installed, but you can install the others in one click in the Welcome app. 
Although this installer isn't super user friendly, displaying a terminal. If the goal is to make people feel more comfortable, this isn't exactly the best way to do it. It's not a huge time saver, if I'm honest. This only saves you about 5 to 10 minutes after the install, which is something that you'll do maybe once a year, once every two years, or once every two weeks if you distro hop a lot. Now you can also change the layout and accent colors straight from the welcome app of Nobara, with layouts based on Windows, Windows 11, macOS, GNOME, GNOME 2, or Unity. The Windows 11 layout was broken for me, with the menu in the wrong place, but all others worked as intended. And you get the usual documentation and support links, how to contribute, and the credits. Compared to Fedora, Nobara will save you about 5 minutes to install your drivers and the necessary apps you want for gaming. It's not a game changer. And compared to something like Ubuntu, it's actually not as good, because on Ubuntu, when you install, you can check a checkbox that will automatically install all the codecs and the drivers, so when you reboot, everything is set up, so it's actually more efficient on Ubuntu than on Nobara. Now the default experience on Nobara, on the official version, uses a heavily modified GNOME. You get a taskbar, Windows style with dash to panel, and the Arc menu GNOME extension. You have the app indicators as well for notification tray icons, you get blur my shell for blurred translucent elements here and there, you get desktop icons, accent colors that can also be applied to GTK3 and Flatpak apps. You get Pop Shell, which is disabled by default, for the auto tiling capabilities, and Wireless HID to display the battery level of controllers, keyboards, and mice in the battery indicator. Window buttons also include minimize and maximize here. In terms of theme, it uses the default Libid Vita dark mode, applied to GTK4 and GTK3 apps and the Papyrus icon theme instead of the default GNOME one. It's a big departure from GNOME, and personally I prefer the vanilla layout to this customized one. I never was a fan of the taskbar and old menu style. It's not my thing. Now fortunately, you can get an ISO with vanilla GNOME or with KDE if you prefer. But that's not what's interesting about Nobara. These customizations you could apply to any GNOME-based distro in a few minutes using the Extensions Manager app. What's really interesting is to test the gaming performance between the two systems, because that's the point of Nobara. So I installed Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Total War Warhammer 3 to run their respective benchmarks on Fedora and Nobara and compare the results. They will all run on the exact same laptop, under X11, with the NVIDIA proprietary drivers that each distro ships. The laptop uses a 12th gen i7-12700H with 16 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 3060, and everything runs on an SSD. All games on Nobara use the default Proton version, which was Proton Experimental, same on Fedora. And in my first tests, Fedora beat Nobara by about 10%, until I realized that Nobara was running on Wayland and not X11, and was not in performance mode. So I redid all those benchmarks, because yeah, the X Wayland performance hit is real. Now with Shadow of the Tomb Raider running the game at the native 1440p resolution on high details, Nobara got 87 FPS on average, with a minimum of 72 and a maximum of 144. On Fedora, using the same settings and resolution, I got 83 FPS on average, with a minimum of 67. That's about 5% difference in favor of Nobara. That's not huge by any means, but it's still nice to have. Running Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p on high details, Nobara got an average of 64 FPS, with a minimum of 22 and a max of 161, with a benchmark score of 11,591. Fedora got an average of 63 FPS at the exact same settings, with a score of 11,281, a high of 159 and a low of 21. That's virtually the exact same performance, no difference here. And in Total War Warhammer 3 at 1440p on medium settings and ultra unit size, Nobara reached 71.6 FPS on average, with highs up to 86 and lows down to 58. Fedora with the same settings got 69 FPS, nice, with a max of 84 and a low of 59. So about 4% difference here again in favor of Nobara. And those performance gaps are repeated throughout multiple benchmark runs that I did. 
but it's really not groundbreaking. It's nice to have, but it won't change how your game plays. Now, in terms of other differences with regular Fedora, Nobara comes with its own graphical package manager on top of GNOME software. This thing shows everything that is installed, all the available updates. It lets you install Flatpak packages, although I don't quite see the point since GNOME software can do it already, and it has a convenient update system button, which again is a duplicate of the one you'll find in GNOME software. It also has a graphical repo manager, just like GNOME software, which shows that Nobara adds their own repos on top of Fedora, and it also comes with RPM Fusion and a few others. It's a nice looking and simple app to install packages that are not available in GNOME software, like all your underlying libraries or drivers, but it also duplicates a lot of the features of GNOME software, and that's really not necessary. Now, just to see if there was any difference between distros, I also tried to connect various Bluetooth controllers, namely an Xbox Series controller and a PS5 DualSense. On Fedora, all controllers connected immediately and worked as intended, without any noticeable input latency. On Nobara, same experience, so no difference at all between the two distributions. And I can't say I'm surprised, controller support on Linux has been absolutely stellar on every distro I tried for the past 4 or 5 years. Now, I use DaVinci Resolve on Fedora to edit all my videos, and it's a big selling point of Nobara to make it as easy to install as possible. On Fedora, you have to install a few dependencies from the official Fedora repos. Then you download the installer from Resolve's website, and you'll need the NVIDIA drivers, of course. On Fedora 38, you even have to launch Resolve with a specific preload option, so that it uses the system's glib-related libraries instead of the ones it ships with, because they're incompatible with the newer versions Fedora 38 uses. And Nobara hasn't been updated yet to use the Fedora 38 base, but I'm pretty sure that since Resolve is one of their main selling points, they will apply that fix automatically when they actually update the distro. Now, on Nobara 37, installing Resolve didn't require anything specific. All the dependencies were already there, the NVIDIA drivers they package are perfectly good for it. You download the installer, you run it, and it works. Nobara even uses the CUDA drivers, which has never been necessary for me on Fedora. I just installed the normal drivers and I installed the CUDA-related libraries from the repos or RPM Fusion. So here on Nobara, the experience with Resolve is definitely simpler than on Fedora. It's not complicated on Fedora, it's like three packages and a little export variable to add before you run the program, nothing too complex. But on Nobara, you don't have to do any of it, and you can be fairly certain that every single one of their distro upgrades will automatically bake in all the necessary tweaks or workarounds, so you never have to figure them out by yourself. So, Nobara is interesting. Nothing it does or ships, in terms of graphical apps or customization, is that important. You can replicate that super easily in like 5 or 10 minutes when you install Fedora. It's a one-time thing you will not repeat every day, but I guess it's still some time saved. If Nobara provides what you usually install, you might as well go with it instead of regular Fedora. And the delays in terms of updating the kernel or having the major versions available isn't that important either. Sure, you'll get everything one month after Fedora users, but you'll still get your updates every six months. The gaming-related improvements didn't blow me away either, but let's remember that it's on a pretty powerful laptop. The gains might be bigger on a device with less horsepower. In general, something like 4 or 5% improvement wouldn't be enough for me to go to another distro with less support, less documentation, and less trust. But in the case of Nobara, the person responsible has a very solid history of delivering quality software through Proton GE. And while you might run into issues specific to Nobara due to their custom kernel and patches, I would say most fixes you will find online for Fedora will also work on Nobara. So it's an interesting one. Personally, I don't play games on my main desktop PC anymore. I play everything on the Steam Deck, and I'm also planning to make my own Steam console, which is basically going to be a micro ATX PC with an AMD GPU running Holo ISO and plugged into my TV, because my main desktop is in my office and I just don't want to play games sitting at a desk in front of a PC. It's just not a good experience for me. But I'll make a video about the Steam console when it's ready. But if I needed a gaming PC that will also be used as a regular computer, 
I would definitely go with Nobara over Fedora. The time saved and optimizations will not revolutionize your experience, but it makes things easier than setting up everything yourself on regular Fedora. So yeah, Nobara is better than Fedora, for gaming and content creation at least. Marginally better, but still better. Now, on the other hand, this segue to today's sponsor is vastly better. If you're planning to buy a new computer to run Linux on, stop buying devices that were made to run Windows and only support Windows. Buy something from Tuxedo from the link in the description below. They're based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world. And they have a huge range of devices for every need and every price point. Whether you need an affordable laptop, a super powerful workstation, or a gaming device, or anything in between, they have it. All the devices are super customizable, you can just slap your distro on it and it's gonna run, and all their laptops are openable, repairable, and upgradable, including the battery, the RAM, and the SSD, and sometimes even the wireless card. So, if you need a new computer and you're planning to run Linux on it, buy something from Tuxedo. Click the link in the description below. It's just vastly better than buying a device that's supposed to run Windows. So, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, well, you can always dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel, well, you can support it. There are plenty of links in the description below for LibraPay, Patreon, PayPal, YouTube things, I don't know what else, YouTube memberships, you know the drill. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.